Hey guys, in this episode, I am going to teach you the best way to kill Rogvold Shadow. As far as skills, I recommend the usual skills for fighting a boss. Unstoppable is particularly helpful to keep you from getting frozen too long. And then a lot of these other skills are just based on the weapons that I'm using for this fight. During this fight, you're gonna be fighting skeletons, which you should use your falchion, and you're gonna be fighting morning reaper shadows, which you should be using a claymore. This requires you flipping back and forth between your inventory to the different weapons. If you are not an advanced player and you do not know how to switch quickly back into your inventory, then this may not be the time that you wanna fight this boss. For those of you who are more intermediate players and think you're up for the challenge, the trick to being able to switch quickly in your inventory is to always place the same items in the same slots so that your finger memorization knows where to click for what items. You obviously need to have a flaming sword to scare away the night guess. In the morning reaper shadows will disappear and if you don't kill them quick enough they'll heal a lot so you do want to use a claymore so that you're not having a really long battle with them. If you did not see my hidden changes video for this update there is lightning that strikes and when it strikes it can do a lot of damage so you do want to avoid those spots when they light up. The gauntlet as you approach Ragvald's shadow is quite a long one. You're going to be fighting a lot of skeletons and a lot of his little minion shadows and they can be pretty overwhelming and you obviously need to be able to fend off the night guests as well. After you kill the 15 skeletons and the 18 morning shadows, Ragvald's shadow will appear once you try to activate the chest. You cannot open the chest without killing him because he has the key. And then when you attack him, not only will he do a lot of damage and heal himself as he is doing damage, but he will also summon more of the little shadows to fight you. You'll notice there that he just froze me. This is where it's good to have some Mandrake potions for this battle because not only will you do more damage with your Claymore, but it also heals you gradually as you are gonna be fighting quite a few enemies. Rockwold Shadow has around 2000 hit points, but he also heals while he's attacking you, which makes it feel like a lot more. You also end up fighting about 12 Morning Reaper Shadows, and so that also feels like a lot. So you will end up needing about two or three Claymores for this fight, not to mention that there will be a lot of night guests during this time that you have to scare off with your fire sword. You will likely go through more than one set of armor during this fight and he will freeze you often with his skill. So it's really good to have that passive skill reducing how long he freezes you. Once he dies, he does drop a little bit of poisonous gas, so you do want to leave a little bit, and then you can get the key to the Sinister Castle chest. You can see here by this loot that he drops the new bone and the quality bowstring, which are new to this update. And then he drops the new trapper skill, which I think is going to be one of the best skills for fighting Aisa. Speaking of which, if you guys have not seen my video on killing Aisa, I definitely recommend checking it out. Well, that's it guys. Hope that helps. I love Grim Soul and have been playing it since the beginning. Beginning. But lately I've been enjoying Kafir's more advanced game, Frostborn, because it has actual multiplayer. If you guys like the storyline or really intense single player challenges of Grimsoul, then you might not like Frostborn, but it does have a lot of similarities because it is the same survival game style, but it is actual multiplayer. So if you guys want to check that out, I have a lot of videos on that game as well. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.